Step into the world of board games, where cherished family moments unfold amidst fierce competition. But what lies beneath the surface of these beloved games? Join me as we uncover the startling origins of five classic board games. And in the spirit of gaming fun, I'll sprinkle in some trivia questions along the way to keep you on your toes. So Darklings, are you ready to embark on this quest? Here's your first question. Which board game owes its existence to Abraham Lincoln's decision to grow a beard? The answer is The Game of Life, which simulates the journey of a person through various life stages, encompassing everything from early adulthood to retirement, including the possibility of attending college, pursuing careers, getting married, and even raising a family. Developed in 1860 by Milton Bradley under the name The Checkered Game of Life, it marked the inception of Bradley's renowned games company. Bradley's invention of the game stemmed from his ownership of a lithography business. Previously, company profits had soared with the release of a highly sought-after lithograph featuring a clean-shaven Abraham Lincoln during an election year. However, Bradley's triumph was short-lived. The unexpected growth of Lincoln's beard rendered Bradley's extensive inventory of clean-shaven prints utterly obsolete, pushing him perilously close to financial ruin. Luckily, his game garnered immediate popularity, selling 45,000 copies within its first year. The game's original board, reminiscent of a modified checkerboard, aimed to guide players towards landing on beneficial spaces and accumulating points. Notably, reaching happy old age in the upper right corner, opposite the starting point of infancy, yielded a significant 50 points. However, the original iteration of the game carried a somewhat sombre tone compared to its modern counterpart. Squares named Disgrace, Poverty and Ruin featured, alongside the unsettling inclusion of Suicide. On to our next question. Can you guess which board game was invented because of Adolf Hitler? Cluedo, or Clue, is a board game that challenges players to unravel a murder mystery by deducing the culprit, location of the crime, and the weapon involved. Which, when you think about it, is quite a macabre theme for a family-friendly game. During the air raids on Birmingham, England, amidst World War II, Anthony Pratt, a musician and factory worker, found himself confined to his home, much like many others. Reflecting on the missed social gatherings, he recalled the murder mystery games enjoyed at parties, as well as the detective fiction of Agatha Christie that captivated the era. Motivated by a desire to provide entertainment during these challenging times, Pratt crafted a game that would allow people to experience the thrill of a murder mystery party from the comfort of their own homes, especially when social gatherings were virtually impossible due to the war. After collaborating on the design with his wife, Elva, Pratt presented the game to Waddington's executive, Norman Watson, who promptly acquired it. Watson christened the game Cluedo, a clever amalgamation of clue and ludo, the Latin word for I play, and the name of a popular game in England. For the American market, the name was streamlined to clue, considering the lesser familiarity with the game ludo in the United States. The iconic design of the game's board is said to have drawn inspiration from the Tudor Close Hotel in Rottingdean, Brighton and Hove. Early editions of the game were even titled Murder at Tudor Close. Despite being granted a patent in 1947, the game's official launch in the United Kingdom was delayed until 1949 due to post-war shortages. Notably, there were several differences between the original game concept and the version finally published in 1949. Pratt's original design featured ten characters, including Mr. Brown, Mr. Gold, Miss Grey and Mrs. Silver, who were later eliminated. Originally, the game encompassed eleven rooms, including the gun room and cellar, which were removed. Moreover, the original iteration of the game was more gruesome, featuring additional weapons such as a bomb, syringe, fireplace poker, axe and poison. The lead pipe a long-standing component of the game, was originally crafted from actual and toxic lead, eventually replaced with steel in 1965 and later with pewter. Pratt's involvement in the creation of Cluedo sparked his interest in crime, leading him to become something of a crime fanatic. In a 2009 interview, his daughter remarked on his fixation, stating, he was fascinated by the criminal mind. When I was little, he was forever pointing out sites of famous murders to me. On to our next question. What popular board game was stolen from the inventor? The answer is Monopoly, 
which made its debut in 1935, boasting an impressive sales record of over 275 million copies worldwide. Monopoly is a financial-themed game where players move around the board, acquiring and trading properties, and upgrading them with houses and hotels. The ultimate goal? Accumulating wealth and strategically bankrupting opponents by collecting rent. For years, the official story was that during the peak of the Great Depression, an unemployed man named Charles Darrow invented Monopoly. After being turned down by multiple game companies, he finally struck a deal with Parker Brothers. The game skyrocketed to success, turning Darrow into a millionaire overnight and epitomizing the quintessential rags-to-riches American dream, capturing imaginations. However, the reality was far from the fairy tale, it seemed. Unbeknownst to many, Charles Darrow had actually stolen the game. The game was invented in Washington, D.C. in 1903 by a bold and progressive woman named Lizzie Maggie. A staunch feminist with strong political convictions, she was deeply influenced by the progressive economic theories of Henry George, advocating for the public ownership of land to prevent exploitation by landlords. Despite her dedication to teaching evening classes about her political beliefs, Lizzie felt overwhelmed by the unfairness in wealth disparities of the new century. It seemed impossible that an unknown woman could affect real change. So she conceived the idea of using a board game as a means to educate and reach a wide audience. Lizzie's creation, named The Landlord's Game, offered players two different sets of rules. Prosperity, where the goal was for all players to double their wealth, and Monopoly, where winning the game came from charging rent and driving opponents into bankruptcy. Unfortunately, the latter proved far more fun to play. Over the following years, the game spread organically among friends, until it was introduced to Charles Darrow and his wife Esther during a friend's dinner party in 1932. Darrow rebranded the game as Monopoly and sold it to Parker Brothers. This move made Darrow millions, as he received royalties for life. However, when Parker Brothers discovered that Lizzie had invented the original Landlord's Game, they purchased the patent from her for a mere $500, without offering royalties or acknowledging her as the game's designer. Lizzie Maggie's board game was intended to shed light on the dangers and unfairness of unrestrained capitalism. It's a tragic irony that her creation ultimately succumbed to the very forces she sought to expose. Now for our next question, what board game is based on Hindu philosophy? Snakes and Ladders, also known as Shoots and Ladders in the United States, traces its origins to a family of historic Indian dice board games. This timeless game was immensely popular in ancient India and deeply intertwined with traditional Hindu philosophy. It served as an educational tool for illustrating the consequences of one's actions, whether virtuous or vice-ridden. The game board itself was adorned with symbolic imagery emblematic of ancient Indian culture, featuring gods, celestial beings, animals and botanical motifs. Ladders symbolise noble virtues such as generosity, faith and humility, whereas snakes represented moral pitfalls like lust, anger, murder and theft. At its core, the game conveyed a profound moral lesson. Through virtuous conduct, one could ascend spiritually towards divine enlightenment and karmic liberation, ultimately transcending the cycle of rebirth. Conversely, indulging in wrongdoing would lead to spiritual regression, symbolized by descent into reincarnation of lower life forms. The deliberate imbalance between the number of ladders and snakes served as a poignant reminder that the path of righteousness is arduous, while the allure of sin may be more enticing and readily available. Reaching the final square of the game symbolizes the culmination of countless lifetimes worth of good karma, marking the attainment of ultimate wisdom and liberation from the confines of the material realm. And finally, what is Detective Columbo's first name? This is relevant, I promise. Trivial Pursuit is a game where players navigate the board by answering trivia questions correctly. The questions are categorized into six distinct areas, each denoted by its own colour. Upon answering a question correctly, players receive a wedge, which is then placed into a round playing piece. There's been ongoing debate about whether these playing pieces are affectionately referred to as pies or cheese. Let me know which is your preference in the comments. This beloved game originated in December 1979 in Canada, crafted by Chris Haney and Scott Abbott. By 1981, Trivial Pursuit hit the market, and within just five years, it had sold a staggering 20 million units, 
raking in over $600 million in sales. Yet, amidst its wild success, Trivial Pursuit faced a formidable legal challenge. A significant portion of the game's questions were discovered to have been directly copied from Fred Worth's book, Super Trivia. Worth was able to prove this because he intentionally planted an error in his book. The question about Detective Columbo's first name incorrectly listed the answer as Philip, whereas the correct answer is actually Frank. This incorrect answer found its way into Trivial Pursuit, sparking Worth's demand for compensation from the game's sales. Given that the entire premise of Trivial Pursuit hinges on answering trivia questions, many of which were painstakingly researched and written by him. Ultimately, the district court judge ruled in favour of the Trivial Pursuit inventors, asserting that facts cannot be copyrighted, regardless of the time and effort spent by someone else to compile and verify them. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the origins of five beloved board games. Did any of the stories surprise you? Let me know in the comments if your favourite game made the list, or if you learned something new. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for more fascinating content. See you in a future video.